Washed Up Sports Washed Podcast. Up sports podcast. Washed Up Sports Washed Podcast. Washed Up Sports Podcast. Washed Up Sports Podcast. What's going on? 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 What's going on, guys? What's going on, guys? Welcome back to a Washed Up Sports Podcast. This is episode 33. My name is Evan Klein, and I'm glad to be joined alongside my co-host, Max Lindley. What's going on, guys? Glad to be back. We got an awesome episode and interview for you guys today. Big Baby David, also known as David Mendelssohn. Well, not also known as. He's David Mendelssohn, also known <laughs> as Big Baby David, um, joins the show. He's one of Glamrock's own. Um, so before we get to that, before we get to the episode, if you want an ad free broadcast, check out our Patreon for that and early access to every episode. Today's episode is brought to you by the Daily Scoop. Daily Scoop is the premier dog walking and pet sitting service in Bergen County located in Glenrock. Daily Scoop provides service not only to Glenrock, but to several surrounding towns as well. They ensure that you are getting the best possible care for your pets while you cannot be with them. From the simple dog walk to daycare at the Daily Scoop, they have you covered. And if you need to leave town to visit your family or friends for the weekend, have no fear. Daily Scoop offers pet sitting services as well. Inquire for more at www.thedailyscoop.com. That's scoop with a K at www.thedailyscoop.com. Scoop.com. Here's Max with their Instagram. Daily Scoop LLC. Check them out. Scoop with K. Today's episode is in partnership with the Retro Recovery. Retro Recovery is New Jersey's number one source for vintage clothing and 90s nostalgia. <laughs> From vintage football jerseys and starter jackets for the draft to vintage baseball tees and caps for opening day, the Retro Recovery has you covered. Get you swagged out. <laughs> Hell and yeah. Free shipping is offered nationwide. Hell yeah. Woo! Shop the spring collection now at theretrorecovery.com. And if you want to save a buck, use code washed up. That's W A S H E D U P for 10% off of your order. That's code washed up at theretrorecovery.com. For 10% off your order, get your gear now. True that. David Mendelssohn, big baby David of John Boy Media joining the show today. Very exciting. You know, it's great to be back for our 33rd episode. You know, 33, that's a, you know, it's, it's every cool every week it keeps like, we keep adding one and it keeps feeling like, wow, that's like pretty substantial, I feel every like. Every week know? feels like a milestone. I yeah, feel exactly. Like. It's, it's getting, it's substantial. I feel like it's at a point where it's like 33 episodes, like damn like you, we really did this shit it's like i feel like once we hit a hundred it'll really be like oh wow. my god yeah. dude because like that'll be crazy you see a lot of people who start things and then just like ne- do, just drop it you do it for like two weeks and then like you're like yeah maybe it's not you know maybe it's too much maybe it's and put- i feel like we've said this before but like when we started it we weren't like anticipating doing it every week you know it kind of just like started and right. then we rolled with the punches and just kept on going right like we were now we're here we weren't anticipating doing it every week we weren't anticipating using equipment like yeah I you mean, know like, like shitty mics yeah if you want to hear that story go check out the next woman up podcast they asked us all about that, that was funny on yeah. that episode yeah um no doubt but anyway but, ready to dive in yeah i think you forgot to tell everybody what we are Wow, dude. I haven't done that in a while. Have you not? Dude, for some reason, I forgot. I, like, stopped doing that. All right, so why don't you just throw it in We're an authentic sports commentary from the perspective of two washed-up athletes. I'd like to know what episode, for some reason, I just, like, dropped that. Me too. Because I love that. I'll look back. I love that line. Yeah, I'll look back. So. Two washed-up athletes. Yeah. Hell yeah. Gonna add some more washed-up athletes soon, so stay tuned. It's a growing brand, guys. Growing, growing process. (laughs) It's Trust the process. Right. All right. We got an Olympics update. Yeah. We are in the Olympics. In the thick of it. Right. Right. Um, so, Simone Biles withdraws from the women's gymnastic final on Tuesday due to her mental health. And in my opinion, all that needs to be said about this situation is this. First things first, Simone Biles is a GOAT. That's undisputed. But if you're saying anything other than wishing her well or acknowledging the courage it takes to withdraw from competition and speak up about your own mental health, just stop. You sound like an idiot. In my opinion, I feel that's all that needs to be said, and we wish Simone well. She's still the GOAT. Oh, yeah, no doubt. And, uh, yeah. She's awesome, for sure. For sure, she's uh, really good. Props to her for speaking up about it. That's that's huge. Yeah. I mean, like, she's accomplished so much. Like, you know, do what you need to do. Yeah. You know? What's best for Simone. Right. 
USA women's softball team won their first five games and ended up playing Japan in the gold medal game where Japan's stellar defense, you know, prevailed. Japan won 2-0, leaving U.S. with silver. It's a little disappointing. Yeah, there was like... Some might call that deflating. Yeah. (laughs) There was this really good play that Japan had at the plate um, where I think it was a pass ball and the pitcher went and covered and ended up blocking the plate and tagging the U.S. runner who was trying to steal Mm. home out. And that was just a real pivotal point in that game. But, dude, Japan is legit. Mm. Their softball team is legit. Yeah. I I watched... All of the highlights of Team USA, they played Japan twice, and the second time they lost. Yeah. Yeah. But um, congrats to Team USA, going 5-for-5 five five and then losing the last one. But a great season, and huge congrats to Japan's softball team. I mean, they're, right. they're insanely good. Yeah, it's awesome to see, you know, the softball um you know, on like a big broadcast screen because, you know, it, it's not like, like ESPN on the nationwide doesn't, scale. Yeah, ESPN doesn't play softball for some reason. Yeah. So like, it's like, and it's if cool. it did, it would be like ESPN 2 or ESPN 3. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I get Bullshit. What you're softball saying. is pretty fun. So, some, dude, they pitch so fast. Dude, it, I, well, they play, co- they put college softball on ESPN yeah, and that's time. always fun. Yes. You know? Um, but you're right. It's very cool to see softball on like the national stage in the Olympics yeah. and. As two men's US softball, is so good. as two softball players currently we, we, ourselves, you our, know, our stuff is so much easier. The, the high, <laughs> yeah, the yeah. high arc. Yeah, yeah, no, hundred um, percent. Yeah, because their the mound to plate there, they're throwing like seventy, eighty, and it the mound is so much closer to the yeah. plate, so it looks like I think I think they throw harder than seventy, eighty. Really? Yeah, dude, that looks like it's coming out like a bullet. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah, but it definitely feels faster because oh, of yeah. how because no, of how but close I don't know. I would love to. Look, let's look it up. I'm actually just curious to see how fast the average woman's softball pitch is. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Around seventy to eighty miles per hour. Nailed so, it. Y- you were. You were. <laughs> um, but s- damn, that's still fucking fast. No, yeah, that is fast. I can't for not that. throwing it overhand. I can't <laughs> like, pitch over. I can't pitch overhand that fast. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So that's wild. Yeah. Um. No, that shit's impressive for sure. Yeah. Wow. So, moving on, U.S. men's basketball loses their first Olympic show. game since 2004 to the France men's basketball team. So, Evan, question for you. Do you think the men's basketball team has what it takes to make it to the gold medal game? After- or, hold on, the medal rounds. Honestly, like, I don't even know anymore because – this team, I kept giving them. I was like, they're going to get them next time, and they're going to go on their run. This team is just like, they're so, it's just a bunch of individuals playing on the same team. They clearly don't know how to play as a team, and that's why they're losing games. And then, you you know, you come up against a, a France team where they have some sneaky good guys, Evan Fournier, Rudy Gobert, like some other, you know, really good players. And and it's just like, they, they're they not winning. They This is their, what, third game that they've lost? fourth Third or fourth game that they've third lost? Third game, first in the actual Olympic yeah. competition. First where it really matters. Yeah. And um, now it's like... So I just I'm concerned. To, I, I hear that. I just wanted to put out there, Popovich says they need to be more efficient, which I think is obvious. They had a 10-point lead, two 9-point leads, and finally an 8-point lead at the end of the game and still couldn't close it out. So I think that really speaks to what Evan just said. There are a bunch of solo players on the same team and it's, it's they need to play some team team basketball listen mike shashevsky always got the usa men's basketball team even though maybe they were individuals he always got them to play together that's and, true and i do respect greg popovich you know he's considered one of the great coaches of our time one of the goats but at the end of the but like if you if i put it in my head something doesn't add up you know people are like oh popovich def hall of famer this might be a controversial take but at the end of the day popovich his best years, he had Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, and Manu. So, like, those, that's like a. You in- could argue that about a lot of coaches. Right, though. right. But ever since those guys, ever since like the 2014 championship that the Spurs won, the Spurs have been pretty irrelevant, I think. Yeah. But I don't think that takes away from someone's Hall of, way- Hall of Fame career. Yeah. I mean, the coach isn't the one on there, I guess, on the court making the. The buckets. No, Pop's a good coach, but I'm. I don't like how this USA team is playing, and it doesn't seem like. I don't think he's that's doing... a reflection of Popovich. Maybe personally, maybe not. But he 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 has shown time and time again he knows what it takes to bring a group of guys together, 
with the Spurs. I mean, you look at the let's teams see it. That then. Let's won. see. It here. I'd love to see it. I'm just I'm just advocating for Pop because I think he's a great coach. No, I I do think he's a great coach. He's I a just, Hall of Famer for sure. I just book. sometimes I think about it and I'm like, well, yeah, like you got skeptical. I get obviously it. you had you know Tim is one of the greatest big men ever. You know Tony Parker was baller. Manu Ginobili baller. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um. So that's it for men's basketball. Yeah. We hope they make it to the medal rounds, hopefully the gold medal game. But we're in un- uncharted water. Isn't that what it is? Uncharted, uncharted territory. territory? Yeah, uncharted territory. Yeah. Or unvisited waters, isn't that something? I think I've heard that. Unfamiliar waters? <laughs> I don't know about that. One. I don't know. I don't know. We're we're in a <laughs> uncharted territory. Uncharted works. territory yeah, I like that. for the US men's basketball sure. team. So moving on. Men's Olympic baseball opening round started Tuesday today. The Dominican Republic set to face Japan. Evan, do you have any predictions before the six teams start their little tournament? Yeah, so I think Dominican Republic's going to beat Japan on Tuesday. Jose Bautista is playing for Dominican Republic, which is going to be cool to see him back out there because he hasn't been uh, active in, in major leagues. Yeah, he hasn't played in a couple of years now. Yeah, and then there's, um, I know, a couple other old-timers because MLB players aren't playing in, yeah. in this. So I think Emilio Bonifacio, um, a few other guys, a lot of – but prospects can play, like Triple A. Like, yeah. So it's like yeah. there's just one guy actually um, – named Johan Mises, who's playing for Dominican Republic. He's in the Red Sox system. I really like him. So I think Dominican Republic's going to win the first one. Then USA versus Israel is very, you know, exciting as well. Uh, Todd Frazier, you know, the the heart and soul of USA baseball, going to be back (laughs) out there playing against Israel, who has a couple other, uh, you know, former MLB guys, and Ian Kinsler, who's always out there. Yeah, Kinsler. Kinsler's always out there. Danny Valencia, Ryan LaVarnway were all uh, MLB guys um, in the past. So that should be fun as well. the only one I've heard of. Gotcha. Yeah. Same with the USA. The only one I heard of was the guy you said um, when I looked at the roster the other day. Most of the other guys are just triple A'ers. David Robertson, he used to pitch for the Yankees. I don't know if you remember. He was a relief pitcher. He was good. I don't. Yeah. Um, There's a few Is it like retired guys too? Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Ian Kinsler is... A front office guy for one yeah, of the yeah, and he just plays in the Olympics. Yeah, I guess or, and like slash World Baseball Classic. I guess when that comes yeah, back. when that comes around. So. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, I it, I mean the United States first game Friday. I don't know when we're going to be able to see that because of the weird time difference and the way that the Olympics is broadcasted here. Yeah. Um, South Korea and Mexico are the two other teams for those that wanted me to mention. South Korea, Mexico, Dominican Republic, Israel, United States, Japan. Japan. Um, Japan's really good too. So the, yeah, they have Tanaka. Most of the teams they have are Tanaka. really good. Yeah, most of the teams are really fucking good. Because Tanaka left the MLB, so he's playing in the Olympics, which is yeah, cool. That is cool. So uh, I'm excited to see US play, even though it's not the main MLB players we're accustomed to. Right. That's but at least we got Olympic baseball. That's back. what the World Baseball Classic is for. Yeah. Well, that's in the off season, right? Yeah. yeah. I, it's once every four years, dude. Yeah. I can't wait for. Um, to see Otani play in that. Yeah, that'll be cool. That's going to be so cool. All right, guys. We now are happy to be joined by David Mendelson. You may also know him as you may also know him as BBD or Big Baby David. You can find him as the senior producer for John Boy Media, Talking Baseball, Talking Knicks, Wake and Jake, and he's also the co-host on the Talking Yanks podcast. So without further ado, Glamrock's finest, David Mendelson. We are now happy to be joined by David Mendelson of John Boy Media. David, thanks so much for coming on the show today, man. Thank you guys for having me. Our pleasure. So you're currently a senior producer for John Boy Media. So for those who don't know, could you just start off by you know giving us a little breakdown of, of what John Boy Media is and who uh, Jimmy, John Boy, that's what he goes by, Jimmy O'Brien, is along with the other guys you work with on some of the shows. Right, so... Um... Jabba Media, we're a, a sports, primarily sports-based media company. Um, you know, we do podcasts, you know, trying to dominate the audio-visual space. Uh, and, and right now, baseball is the specialty, but, we, you know, we have uh, successful football and basketball podcasts as well. But baseball has been our bread and butter. So I personally uh, produce Talking Yanks, Talking Baseball, John Boy Jake Radio, Wake and Jake, um, talking Knicks 
um, co-host of a couple of those, but yeah. Awesome. So, you know, some of the responsibilities that you have in, in your role, like a typical work day, give us a little breakdown of that. Yeah. So, uh, every day the schedule is a little different, but generally speaking, I, uh, you know, I prepare the graphics that we use for like the video end of our YouTube channel or YouTube episodes. And, uh, you know, I, I book our guests, I edit the episodes, get, get them out everywhere they need to be. I set up the live streams. Um, sometimes, uh, depending on the show, I set the topics that we're going to discuss. I get like John by Jake radio. We do like weird news stories. So I'm the one that collects those. Um, I don't know. <laughs> that's it. There are a lot of other little stuff mixed in, but that's a, that would probably be the list of, of what my job requirements are. Gotcha. Gotcha. So like you're, it says senior, we, we wrote down senior producer, but it seems like you're doing like a lot more than that. You're editing all the videos, all the audio, all that to put out. Mm, yeah. Uh, producer. Nobody really knows what any titles mean, but <laughs> producer just kind of felt, felt like the most right. Um, but, you know, we're, we're growing, but still small company. So everyone's got, got a lot of different hats they wear. Gotcha. Were you a fan of like, were you a John Boy media listener before you started working there? Or did you just like, I know because you're obviously a big Yankee fan and it's mm. John, John Boy is like a god within the Yankee community. So were you always a fan of that, of that and of John Boy? Or tell me a little bit about how you got into it. Yeah, I mean, I was a very, very early follower of everything. I think like the first episode of Talking Yanks I listened to was like episode seven or something. Um I was fairly hooked from there, I was following on Twitter and all that. Um, and during the 2017 playoff run is when you know, Jimmy was going live on Periscope, like for every game, not not every inning, of course, but uh, for big moments, I was I was active in those chats. Um, so that's how he got to be familiar with me. And we met a couple times, and uh, so I was I was able to get involved very early in the process. I think I officially was like writing for the website back when we had blogging in like august 2018 um so from there i was writing um listening to the podcast everything i started writing that that was cool and we were trying to figure out what more i could do the money wasn't there to like pay me anything but i was also still in college so it really didn't matter mm-hmm. um i was just happy to be <laughs> writing about the Yankees and that expanded to uh, Jimmy taught me how to edit videos like personally everything I know he taught me um, and then so that became me do editing little like Instagram videos that we did for a while those were fun and um, then I started like helping out with the t-shirt store a little bit and that came to be how they would like pay me so I, I made like a dollar per every shirt we sold um, which <laughs> wasn't um you know, not life-changing money, but it was enough that I didn't (laughs) immediately need to get a job like right after college. That could be my summer job. So it was pretty, it was pretty good. Really helped that like opening day, 2019 Amber Sabathia posted our like, that's for you bitch shirts. um, Oh yeah. (laughs) CC's face on them, which I don't think we would get away with selling anymore, but the Sabathias (laughs) loved it. So that really helped a lot. And then um, yeah, from there, I just kept adding stuff. Jake made me a co-host of talking Nick's. Uh, I started editing those podcast episodes. I kept doing more. I got a real job for like seven months. And uh, I mean, the Astro stuff <laughs> accelerated everything. Yeah. And um, so that that did help me get the job probably about a year earlier than I would have guessed uh, to be able to go full time. And that became the producer role. So I, I guess to answer your literal question, yes, I was I was always a fan, but I got involved very early and I was I was blessed with fortunate timing. That's awesome. Did you meet Jimmy like at Yankee games or you or like some other way? We met for the first time uh, at it was it was a Yankee game in Philadelphia because I I went to school just outside of Philly at her sinus college. Um, Cool. And I was working there for the summer. So I didn't get to go to very many Yankee games. This was the 2018 season. So the Yankees came to Philly for a three game set. And I was like, all right, well, I don't know how many Yankee games I'm going to go to this year because I'm just in Philly for the summer. So I was like, I'll go to all three of those games. Jimmy was going to the middle 
of the three game set. If you want to get weird, it was June 26th. Um, <laughs> uh, so we met, we met there for the first time. We like hung out at, during batting practice. Um, so he figured out I wasn't like a freak. And then uh, in August, early August that year. So like a month and a half later, my family, we were down the shore for vacation where he was living in Lavalette. And uh, I like, do you, that is the first, then, uh, then he, he and I were DMing. I was like, I'm, by the way, I'm five minutes away this week. So he invited me over because we had met before. So he knew I wasn't a freak. Uh, he invited me over to watch Yankees Red Sox. It was the game. It was, it was like the, it ended the Yankees' chances of uh, winning the division that year. It was the like Miguel Andahar threw, I threw it away in the ninth inning to get swept. Uh, so it was a brutal game, but hung out at his house for a while. And uh, we hung out. That's when he found out about like the internship I was doing and that I would write. And that's when he decided to bring me on. So, oh, cool. So there's so, a whole, yeah. there's a whole big backstory to all this. You, there's, you, a, there's a lot, very long winded answers. You, but... you didn't just send your resume to Jimmy O'Brien one day. and was like, Hey, I want to come work for you. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> we like, we like became friends early in the process. Um, and I was just fortunate enough that I like, wasn't still in school and everything was ready to expand because i think if i was like a year younger probably wouldn't have been as simple i mean i think i would have ultimately ended up here but maybe not in the same role so i don't know i was gotcha we, we were friends <laughs> long story short they were friends <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> so what am i um I thought, oh, no, you go first yeah i thought it was pretty cool you said that he taught you how to edit i mean the breakdowns which i feel like besides mm. the astro stuff are the things <clears throat> that always get like always yeah. on my on my youtube page you know what i mean yeah they so, have a life of their own yeah exactly so like <laughs> how cool was that getting him to personally like teach you how to edit and i don't know what you guys use i assume like premiere but that's like premiere, a complex, yeah. yeah that's a complex like freaking editing software. yeah he, how was that he it was it was really cool he um so <laughs> another part of the story of like how i got there like he invited me to go out to the winter meetings with him and Jake in Vegas, which is the first time Jake and I met um, in, tw uh, in 2018. Um, and then from there, he, he, we were talking about, I was telling him like, hey, I wanna like learn how to edit videos. I said, and he invited me to back down to his house again for like the week we got back. I was on winter break from school and stuff, obviously it was December. Um, so then he invited me to his to his house and he taught me like the very basics which to an extent is still all i really know i i feel like i can't do anything too sophisticated with it but uh but he just gave me the very basics and and a, especially now it's a very cool story that he that he taught me directly like everything i know um but yeah no doubt oh, max does a lot max does the editing for our show so and he i know he uh he's really into yeah, that I was, stuff I was so very like, interested he's curious see, about like, that learned and what what went into that you know yeah yeah just literally like hey this <laughs> i needed to learn everything like this is how you cut this is how you do this this is like how you export a video out like i knew nothing I mean, you were like all YouTube basically, right? Or you in like self taught? Like you taught yourself basically everything. I mean, no, everything. I, had, I had Mr. Croft in high school. Oh, yeah. So, oh, um, Mr. I Croft, had, my guy. <laughs> so I had a little experience in Adobe, but not until we started using it again did I actually get it again. Like, like learn it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I yeah. just knew how to fucking cut a video. In yeah exactly yeah. yeah like in high school they were like they somewhat taught us a bit of adobe like photoshop and stuff but nothing complex at all just like the, the pure basics i don't even know when if you and you were at glenn rock david if they were even doing anything with adobe but not adobe i learned like a little bit of photoshop and like the web design class gotcha um, yeah so a personal question I had is Trevor Plouffe, you know, as awesome as he seems, I was always a big fan mm. of the third base he played in Minnesota. So, I mean, that, I, I think it's really cool that you get to work with him. Tell, talk a little bit about him and like what working with him is like. Dude, Plouffe's just the man. Like, like he's, he's exactly how he comes off. I mean, that's kind of our whole thing. Like nobody's, nobody's faking it. We don't have like characters or anything we're trying to play. Like everyone is, is how we seem. And, uh, like Ploof is like just the coolest dude, nice as hell. Like 
you'll they'll do like anything for for anybody once once you once you have like that relationship with him he's he's the best that's awesome yeah i mean i was incredible for us play play played played a great third base so yeah solid player (laughs) nice little career yeah, probably like a look, career. We don't talk like, about Oakland and Tampa. <laughs> <laughs> career, career 250 hitter. It'll play, you know? Yeah, around, got, somewhere the, around there. Had like a 106 OPS plus one. Year. <laughs> 106 career uh, career homers. There you go. It's all you need, right? Call it, yeah. call, call it a career and move on to John Boy Media. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Living the dream, Trevor Bluth is. So, David, you go by Big Baby David on all mm-hmm. of the shows. Where did that nickname come from? Is it a tribute to Big Baby Davis? Yeah, I like I so there I don't have like a common name, but somehow like the other two David Mendelssohn's like got they got the straight up at David Mendelssohn's on on like every app. It's like, <laughs> like how, how how you got you guys are too quick. So then I I was thinking about it, and I always one of my birthday. I'm a July birthday, so it's pretty young for the grade always. And I was always small and had the young face. I was like, well, I'm always young, young for the young for the grade and all that. Look really young. Uh, and Glenn Davis was still like an active basketball player, so <laughs> <laughs> so it was like easy, like switch a letter, and uh, and that became like an easy username for me. And then when I got to college, people like started calling me it, and then it became probably a very good thing for like my career um because i mean david mendelson isn't exactly snappy <laughs> so it is what it is i mean no that's pretty awesome so to answer the question you made it up you know what I mean? yes. yeah that's yes. awesome um <laughs> dude i saw it so well i want to definitely talk a little bit about more um you know you guys went to all-star week so we're definitely going to mm-hmm. talk a little bit more about that but i saw the video at the um i guess what was that uh sort of like conference you guys were at where people started chanting bbd it was unreal <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah so we had our our plan for the weekend was we wanted to go to the home run derby and then we were going to do like a live event now that you can do events again um it was like a live watch along for, for, uh, the all-star game. And beforehand we had like a VIP experience for our patrons got for first crack at buying it, but anyone who wanted to spend 50 bucks would get, you know, a couple me- a couple drink tickets and we get to take part in a Q and a and do trivia with Chris Rose and, um, nice. get like a little bit of extra meet and greet with us. So then we did. So the Q that was just part of the Q and a, um, we had like a panel of like, we brought like our whole company there. So it was a pretty, ended up a pretty big panel. Um, and I don't know. I was, I got the standing O. <laughs> that's amazing. I don't Dude, that's it. gotta, that's got, that's gotta be cool though. That's gotta feel good. You know, like, you know, Glen Rock isn't exactly the biggest place where tons of like people, you know, are known at all. And so it must be cool to, you know, be doing something where you're getting some attention like that and stuff like, you know, stuff like that. I can't lie. It's a, it's a cool feeling. I like, I cried a little bit. Um, <laughs> I don't, hopefully we'll see. There was, we had one camera come close up during that. I don't know how it's going to come out in the vlog. Hopefully it was just, just a little misty and not a, I don't think I was flowing, but, but it was, fair. I was like pretty That's emotional fair. about it. It got me pretty good. That's like, fair. Feel, feeling loved feels good. Of course. Absolutely. Of course. And, then it, and then, into, <laughs> and then in terms of like the game and the Derby and everything, you know, that obviously, you know, was that your first time at an all-star game? Um, my first, yeah. My first time in an all-star game, first time at a home run Derby. I, we'll go to a game at some point, but we're like for sure never missing a home run Derby again. That's the best event MLB puts on. Um, oh, I've it, always it, wanted it to go. Awesome. Yeah, I was, it was awesome. To, I mean, not only Denver, not was only really was good. it just like the home run derby, but it was a great derby. Like in terms of how derbies really go, good. it was, it was great. Yeah. Like every matchup was good. Alonzo put on an absolute show. I picked him in the John Blade media Homer draft. So I scored three points for our team. Let's go. So that felt pretty good. Um, the Otani part of it was a little disappointing, but if he's going to go out, uh, might as well be in a swing off with Juan Soto. So right. even that even that I'm like not upset. No, I mean as a one seed, like it's not like people are like, oh, but he was the one seed. I mean, Juan Soto is not like a is not a guy who can't hit yeah. home runs. You know what I mean? He's obviously there for a he's reason. A, he's a premier player. Yeah. Absolutely. The seeds in the home run derby like matter, but do they actually matter? Like Mancini, yeah. Mancini in the first round, like every I everyone picked Mancini over Olsen, I felt like. 
Yeah, lo- love Trey. And um, yeah, I have no. Were the seeds based on anything this year? Because they announced it so they announced the seedings like pretty early. Like usually they just say like uh, it just goes like order of how many homers they have, which yeah. might have been what they did. I think but, that is what they I did. Is, yeah. I felt like they most. announced it so early. And I was like, well, we're not like there yet. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree with that. That actually, it is must be of... what happened, but I didn't do the mental math on it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So obviously the, the scaling of John boy media is kind of like no other that's out there right now. You know what I mean? There's like, you guys have so many shows out there mm-hmm. that are coming out all the time. What would you, what advice would you give or what are some tips like to scaling like that? Because I feel like it's pretty difficult to constant, to constantly be putting out content, constantly be producing, editing, all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Well, in general, for any, for any one show, the, the number one thing is like, don't, don't like miss, you know, upload days or release days. Cause like you want to make yourself part of somebody's routine, keep to that schedule. Like if somebody's expecting to listen to you every Monday, um, you know, don't take that for granted and have, let them like get, get used to somebody else being what show they listen to on a Monday or whatever day it is. So for any one show, just like stick to your schedule, make sure you don't miss. Um, that's like number one, just for, for growing a show. As far as just, the amount of content cranked cranked out um you know it, it helps that i have most of the stuff i do is with jimmy and jake i mean all of it has at least one of them i think and they're like the two hardest working people i know and and they really don't stop so <laughs> so then i can't stop and then um and we just have a great team around us that we've built up and, and everybody is able to help everyone so but on the small scale when you're if you're just starting like make sure you stick to your routine I like that. Yeah, no doubt. So do you have a favorite show to work on out of all the ones that you that you are associated with? Um, so obviously Talking Yanks is a very a, a very close place to my heart. It's the it's the show that started everything. Um, the fact that I've been able to become like a part of the show is, is amazing. But but if you had to say my favorite my favorite thing we do is um is John Boy Jake Radio, which is like our one show that like, yes, we end up getting into sports a little bit, but generally, and it used to be a little more sports heavy, but that show we like, we just banter and we do like a weird draft every week. Yeah. And yeah is that the one where you guys draft states? I yeah, we I did the state draft. draft that was, <laughs> yeah, that was like our, our biggest early draft. We did, we did that. We drafted the alphabet. That was the first one we did. <laughs> who was your, uh, fir- who was your first pick in the alphabet? I had one, one, I took S um why it's common it's the num. i think it's the number one used consonant um and then after, as, as an unbelievable and then, stat <laughs> and then uh after that i was i knew we were gonna go five deep and i was just trying to think of like funny well what, did i do it on the second round i think by the time it got back to me i knew i was trying to find a funny five letter word i could spell okay uh, so and then i um and I tried to spell penis. <laughs> so then I think I got P on the wrap around or on the next on the next time around. So it was like the sixth pick. And then I grabbed N E went, which is an oversight by me. I was gonna say you should have tried to get salad. Yeah. <laughs> there's a cu- well, there's a couple of uh A's in there. So then I think I ended up with um D P N I S, which works. So and Jake spelled farty, which which was nice. Nice. That was. I don't think he intended to do that one. And we did. We did triangles last week. We did bodies of water. We do. We do some weird ones, and those are that not is the most obscure we did. I mean, we did. We made I, one week. We made like we made baseball lineups out of the planets, um, which wasn't like a draft. We just like all came in and we're like, let's see, let's see how we differed on this. <laughs> we're doing, I think we're doing that again soon. I don't know if it'll be this week or next week, um, but we want to do it again with colors. Um, I think so Earth would we be. Do, my, we do some weird ones. Earth would be my pitcher. Your pitcher. Yeah. Earth, Earth, you you have to have Earth up the middle for sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. Neither. I think I had Earth at short and Venus in center, but some, I think Jake had Earth in center. Um, Earth's the only planet that has had baseball played on it. So he's clearly in a premier position. 
Right. You need yeah. See, I never. This is crazy because, no, like, I thoroughly enjoy these shows. Yeah, Matt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. John Boy Media does some really awesome stuff. We we enjoy it for sure. Um, so, you know, one piece of advice you'd give to an aspiring sports journalist, someone who wants to get into the industry, producer, podcaster, you know, just like work in in that line. You know, it's very competitive. Um, what what would your advice be? Right, I would and. I I didn't do the best job of doing this when I was technically unemployed. Although I like, yes, I was doing stuff with, with uh, John Boy Media the whole time. But like, even if you're not currently, like just start doing stuff. Even if you don't currently have like a a gig and who cares how many people are listening to it, just keep doing it, get your skills sharp. Eventually it'll click. And of course you, and, and along with that, if you, if you want to start growing an audience, you do, you can't do it without like using social media and using it well. Um, that that is how you grow an audience i wish i wish it didn't i wish you didn't have to do it that way because obviously you know twitter can be a toxic place but that is what you got to do to to grow anything that's how you get eyeballs on it you start with the small scale stuff you build people up to the podcast no doubt I like that. And I think it's great also just adding in there um, that you guys like it's uh, with like the difference between, you know, like talking baseball or John boy, Jake radio. It's very, di- the content is very diverse. Like John boy, Jake radio, mm-hmm. you're going there to talk about just like life and other things. And then if you want your sports, you go over to the other show. It, it's great. Yeah. Well, sometimes sure. we get, we get the, the obvious overlaps with talking Yanks and talking baseball, but that's, that's another reason why, why having Trevor Plouffe on the show, like fully on the show that he, like the, he's been the last year and a half or so has right. been so awesome. Cause we don't just have the same conversation twice. Right. Um, I mean, like I'm a before red. Before he was on, <laughs> it would be like Yankee sign DJ LeMay and we have to do the conversation twice. Yeah. Um, but we have Trev, so we can bounce he gets to hear what Yankee fans think. We get to hear an outside voice on that. Uh, Right. And I'm as a Red Sox fan, as a Red Sox fan, like I'm not, I I can't listen to talking Yanks and like enjoy it. You know what I mean? So it's (laughs) not the same. Yeah. So you drink some tears this year. So so talking baseball is a little more. uh, Yeah. That's our, actually our next question. Max was going to get into it. Oh, I'm going to get into it. We just want to talk a little bit about the current state of the New York Yankees with you. Uh, My, displeasure but <laughs> let's do it <laughs> so what is through the first half i mean it's been uh mostly downs for the new york yankees uh what's going on there why do you think this team hasn't been able to click yet and do you think they are going to click i mean it'd be hard for them to play a whole lot worse lately the the mission more than anything else has been the bullpen even the guys who are good are are getting overworked. And then we've had a, lo- a lot of guys just in and out of the, of the active roster. Britain's been out basically all year. Darren O'Day has been not been able to, to make himself a factor. Justin Wilson's been a negative and rolled as Chapman after a dominant, as dominant a six or seven week stretch as I've ever seen a pitcher have. And I watched most of Mariano Rivera's career. Uh, he's been, he, his war is down to zero. He's completely negated it he's it's incredible how how bad he has been for well over a month (laughs) hey that's an mlb all-star you're talking about (laughs) yeah man somehow some way the thing is that's why that's part of what makes like all-stars the whole process a a little bit bullshit is that like like yeah you could have a great month or two and that's kind of all you need to do to be an all-star and then you can have like every year there's a guy who is an all-star that ends up at the end of the season, it's like he had a bad year. Um, you know, but no you can look back five years ago. Uh, I don't, somebody on that all star team had a bad year by the end of it. So we put like a little too much stock into all star stuff. But that, I mean, Chapman has himself blown at least five games, like completely blown. And that, and the Yankees had five more wins. Where are you? Uh, you're, you're within striking you're, distance. You're not eight games certainly back in the division. Spot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're in a most Cer- certainly within now. striking distance of of a wild card spot, and you're not dead in the division conversation. Obviously, beyond that, the team they don't hit. So it's been mm. a lot better since since June. They've been a, a bit more representative. It's still not clicking, but they've been more representative, and I'm sure 
the sticky stuff ban is not a coincidence, but um, you know, they, they don't hit <laughs> the only right. guys performing. Well, Aaron judge is obviously a superstar. Uh, John Carlos Stanton's been, been a very, very comfortably above average player. He's had a couple different red hot stretches that, and the rest of the season has been good, better than great, but overall he's been very good. Gio Urshela hasn't clicked. DJ LeMay, who hasn't fully clicked. The last few weeks have been better. Gary had a bad start to the year. He's been better. He's clicking. He's good, but the complete package isn't there. Glaber's been dreadful. Mm. They've gotten nothing from center or left field this season. It's like you can't have two black holes in the in the offense there. And they have no speed. So they right. can't. The base running is terrible. Yeah, yeah, the base and, running and is really bad. Running, if they were hitting beyond that, I mean, the Yankees hit into the second most double plays of any team. The team that has the most that is in the most is the Astros, but they hit beyond that. So, so they don't care about how many double plays they hit into. Right, that's because everybody on the team makes contact. Yeah, they've been, you know, playing winning baseball. They can make stuff happen. Right. <laughs> um, it's been, it's been a mess. <laughs> the pitching's been okay. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, the, the it's been average. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they had a, they had a great May pitching, which which you know buoyed them a bit, and uh, and they've been fine beyond that. Not Are you great, for but, Aaron uh, Boone remaining as the manager of the New York Yankees? Yeah, I I don't like to like call for people's jobs, and I don't, and you you never know who is and is doing what behind the scenes. Like I used to fight people all the time because you know. Larry Rothschild's whole tenure as Yankees pitching coach, everyone wanted him fired every year. Mm -hmm. It's like, you don't know what he does. I, I, so I don't know this. You can point to a million things with that said, I, I don't know how this season, the way it's going, how it can continue. And they bring Boone back, especially his contracts up. Anyway, it's easy enough for them to say they didn't fire him. Same, same thing they did to Girardi. Right. Uh, mid-season firings if they didn't do it by now i don't think they're going to um, i agree they certainly wouldn't have been they wouldn't have been out of bounds for doing it if they had decided to make that choice by now but i i don't think they will i don't think they believe in that anymore gotcha so you know final thoughts from from bbd here are the new york yankees going to be participating in the playoffs this season I think they'll make it a conversation at some point, but um, it gun to my head. No. And how can I, what have they really shown me to, to say yes? I mean, look, they could win. They could go on. They've won their last three or four series or whatever. And, and sure they could go on, go and rip winning 12 out of 15 right now. And, and all of a sudden they're back in the conversation. I mean, they're about to play. They're about to play like a ton of games against the, the in division teams. So, I mean, mm -hmm. if there's any time to do it, it's Red now. Sox, so. Correct. Correct. Do you think the Red Sox, the Red Sox are going to win the division or the Rays? Um, I lean Boston right now, but I mean, the Rays, the Rays are just, there's just such a mystery, but, but that's true. <laughs> they, they just, they just have devil magic there. And, uh, but the Red Sox, like we said it on the show, like they just, they do everything you wish the Yankees would. They, they, one, they hit, but they manufacture runs even when they aren't hitting. And, you know, people step up and, and perform in, in a big moment and they do little things throughout a game. Uh, and they're about to get Chris Sale back. And you, you never like to rely on a guy coming back from Tommy John surgery, but if there's a guy, you want to say is a lock when he comes back. I think Chris sales is as good a lock as anybody. Right. Um, you know, preseason is like, all right, the lineup feels like a real option. They just got to stay afloat till sale comes back and they've more than stayed afloat. They've built themselves a, a nice little cushion and they're going to get him back. I'm sure they're going to make another move. I don't know what it's going to be, but yeah, something. I mean, they should be buyers. I think yeah. like you kind of have to be at this yeah. point, you know, got to be they a great I would love for them to be really aggressive at the deadline. They just called up their, you know, their biggest prospect, Jar Jaron Duran, um, yeah, for the series against New him. York. So yeah, so I'm excited about him. But um, yeah, but yeah, Tough I mean, for him and the Yankees called up Ambergy, so both of them get their debuts day to uh, delayed a day. Yeah, I mean, I have tickets to the game tomorrow, and I, and you know, I'm really hoping that they don't call it. Yeah, I um, dude, it's a, it's weird. <laughs> I don't I, like. 
I have no idea what's going on. I don't know what's supposed to change from today to tomorrow. Right. And that, that's the like, thing. It's going to make a game playable. <laughs> we have, <laughs> exactly. I'm not going, but we have like, like company tickets to the game Saturday. I was like, so I guess that might not happen. I don't know. Yeah. It's, like it, it's crazy. The world's been crazy. It's still crazy, you know, but um, you know, big baby, David, David Mendelson of John boy media, you know, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on here, man. We're so grateful for your time. Absolutely. Let's do it again sometime. Absolutely. You are always welcome back as a reoccurring guest. This was a pleasure. So uh, thanks again and uh, hope to talk soon. Absolutely. We're back from the interview with David Mendelson. That was so much fun. I, I loved it. Yeah. I loved now it. he's electric for sure. He's a great personality and he was really fun to talk to. You know, he gave us some really nice advice. He, uh, he, you know, gave us, you know, some really good stories and talked about what he does, which is super cool. Yeah. So that's and fun. Give some Yankees takes. Yeah. Um, so a little segue, let's, let's talk some baseball. Evan trade deadline coming up. I need your predictions and your thoughts. Who's getting dealt. Who's on the line. I heard the Cubs are dealing. Can you yeah. fill everybody in? Yeah. So we, uh, we saw our first splash earlier this week with Adam Frazier being traded, the the Pirates all-star second baseman being sent over to San Diego, which is big. And then, you know, the Cubs are going to do something. You know, there's a chance that you see Kimbrell, Anthony Rizzo, Bryant, hell, someone might call for, you know, for Baez. You know, they're going to, something's going to happen there. And who knows where they're all going. I've seen rumors, but, you know, rumors are... How often do they come true? Rizzo, Especially in the MLB. Yeah. Rizzo to the Red Sox was a rumor, and that would be fun. Yeah, but it's a rumor. Yeah. If they could figure out a way to get Rizzo, Rizzo and Kimbrell over, that would be crazy. Why don't you keep going through? Um, Max Scherzer has apparently the Razor in talks. I, I don't think Scherzer is leaving the Nationals personally. Max doesn't think Scherzer is leaving the Nationals. Personally. <laughs> Personally. <laughs> Trevor Story, the great shortstop over in Colorado. Yeah. Uh, that'd be crazy to see him move. Um, but Boy, there's, He's so good, too. Yeah, there's they're talking, I, I think. There's been a lot of different speculation about where he's going. Joey Gallo, Jose Berrios is a really good starter for the Twins who could be sent somewhere, and that would be a huge starting pitching. Are you looking pickup. at him going to the AL East, maybe? Because I know like, pretty much the whole AL East needs a starting pitcher. Yeah, I mean, you know? I mean, if the Re- I I know I talk about the Red Sox a lot, but with Sale coming back, if they got Barrios I, too, I was thinking pff. the Yankees too. I mean, I don't know if they're too far out. I think the Yankees should be selling, but I, they probably I won't. They probably won't because they, won't, they always think the Yankees, they're in it. Yeah, yeah, because um, they have money to just throw in people's faces. I mean, so do the Red Sox. Same exact situation. No. Yes. The Yankees are the Yankees. No, but Evan, you gotta, you gotta. The Red Sox are under under the luxury tax. Yeah, ever since we made the Mookie Betts trade, we yeah, but we don't previously have the... when we won a World Series, we were over the luxury tax, and right. that's what most World Series. Teams but I'm do. talking it's present. like a loophole. In I'm MLB. talking. I'm talking present. Okay, I hear you in the present. <laughs> um, but I I was more thinking the Yankees. I don't know if that'll happen, like you said, but um, yeah, the AL East definitely needs pitchers. At least the Red Sox got Chris Sale coming back. Oh, yeah, it's going to be really big. Do you know when he's coming back? Uh, Within the month, probably. That's cool. That's two cool. To th- I, my, my guess would be like two and a half, three weeks, maybe. Gotcha. Because he's he been making, throwing, yeah. he's been making, he made like two minor league appearances already, rehab starts. Gotcha. So. And those are shortened, right? Yeah. Like they're they, like it's like almost three relief innings. pitching. It's three innings, like yeah. the first three innings yeah. of the pitch. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So that's. That's it. Do you have anything else on the trade deadline? Anything you're personally looking forward to? I mean, I'm just excited for for antics. For the antics of it? I need you to stay out of Facebook sports groups during the trade deadline. Yeah, I really should. There's a lot of misinformation there. True that. That's definitely true. NBA draft, by the way. That is coming up. Is that next week? I think it's Thursday. Oh geez, we didn't even talk about it. But All like, right, we'll 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 give an update next week after the draft. Yeah, or maybe I well we might I might hop on Instagram Live or something. Yeah, like that, we'll do, do something. something. Yeah, maybe I we'll hook something up with someone yeah. to get on live. Yeah, you know, we us. only have so much time to to hold your attention, guys. So yeah, there will be something coming out of at the NBA draft. And I, ne- uh, I love the NBA draft, so stay tuned for that. Yeah, and um, yeah, next week we're gonna have don't know the guest yet, so we can't plug it yet, but. 
We're going to talk some NFL because we haven't talked NFL in a while. Get yeah. to some off-season updates. Aaron Rodgers, Maybe Devontae f- Adams. Are your fantasy football drafts are approaching. Ooh. We'll talk some fantasy football next week. Give some tips. Yeah. Some tricks of the trade. Sure. All right. All right, it's been guys. fun, guys. Make sure you follow the Instagram, subscribe to the YouTube. Make sure you follow us on all social media. Make sure you look at our Patreon. It's uh, really great content there, um, and you know it really supports us. So we appreciate you guys, everyone who's hopped on that. And Max, anything? Merch. Merch. Yeah. It's still there. It's, it's so it's still it's there and still it's still there and fire. It's still fire. We need to order yeah. some and do like some promotion on that. We've done like zero promotion on no, it. I, I feel like because it's some cool merch. No, it is. Yeah, but it's not going anywhere, guys. Yeah, so, so go check it out. Link in the bio for all of that. Yep. We appreciate you guys. See you next week. We love you guys. Peace. 033 in the books. Yes, sir. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the rest of our channel and subscribe. Make sure to follow our Instagram and maybe consider subscribing on Patreon for our bonus content. You can only find it there. I promise it will be well worth it. Thanks.